Alright kids, who can tell me what the basics of Factorio are? What is our goal in this game? Uh, build factories, I don't know, kill bugs or something. All of you are wrong. Anyone else? Yes? Tear the planet apart, strip it bare of its natural resources and destroy all the inhabitants, and build a glorious sprawling factory in service to capitalism. Very good. Come up here, kid. Hey there guys, it's Nuber, back with another video for you. This time I'll be making a beginner's guide to Factorio. If you're not familiar with Factorio, it's a capitalist sim- <coughs> Sorry, construction and management simulation game developed by the Czech studio Woob Software. Having crashed on an alien planet, your goal is to build a factory in order to harvest the planet's natural resources and create a comm satellite that helps you escape. The game can be pretty complex, so I figured a guide would be good to help you guys navigate your way in early game till you find your footing. The main thing to remember when you're starting out in Factorio is experimentation. Yeah, it's a challenge and complex game, but shouldn't be afraid to try new things out for fear of failure or whatever, because that's how you learn anyway. Plus, you can always enable certain options to make the game less challenging, you know what I mean? And failure le is less daunting anyway. Don't worry, we've all been a noob at some point, <coughs> given my name. I'll be walking you through a brief guide on what to do as a beginner in Factorio and what not to do. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Firstly, let's have a look at the world generator, which you'll see before starting the game. It gives you various options to make the game generate in different ways, which will of course affect the game's difficulty. The resource setting tab allows you to adjust spawn rate for resources and enemies with three variables frequency, size, and richness. Frequency determines how often you'll see them, size determines how large these locations are, and richness determines how many resource tiles or enemies will appear within. For beginners, the best option would be to crank up all these options for resources and decrease them for enemies, unless you're a masochist, in which case it's the other way around. In particular, you'll want to focus on increasing crude oil spawns as it's vital for progress but may be hard to find depending on the world seat. Or if you don't want to make any changes, just go with the presets. They're on the first tab in the world generation screen. And yes, this game has enemies. What, you thought it was purely a chill game where you can build factories in peace forever? No! The pollution from these factories is going to piss off the local wildlife and they'll attack you. I'll go into some detail on them later, but for now, if you want to build in peace, just select peaceful mode. In this game, the enemies won't attack you unless you attack them first, though you might still have to go on the defense if you're blocking your expansion path. Alternatively, you can set the enemy size to none, which completely disables them from spawning. Okay, now that you've gotten past the world generation, let's talk more about resources when starting out. When selecting a spawn point, you'll want to ensure you have the four main solid resources close to your spawn location, namely coal, copper ore, iron ore, and stone. These resources should ideally be in close proximity to each other since it'll get harder to connect the supply lines if they're far apart. It's a good exercise for your character to run up and down, I guess, so they don't get fat on that alien world, you know what I mean? Just kidding. Anyway, having nearby water is also important for steam engines when once you start trying to generate electricity. If these conditions aren't met, there's no harm in restarting to generate a new world. Just keep trying till you find an ideal world seed over and over and over. Ugh, another bad map. Yes, I finally got a good one. As mentioned earlier, oil is also important later on, along with uranium, but it's fine if there's none near your starting area. By the time you need it, you'll probably have expanded enough to reach the deposits anyway. Okay, you've established a starting point, now what? In Factorio, your goal is to make a huge sprawling factory that runs efficiently. Since that's the case, instead of manually doing everything, which is impossible after a certain point and inefficient anyway, you'll want to automate the process as much as possible. Of course, you'll have to start out gathering and crafting resources by hand, but that won't last too long. First things first, you'll want to start building a bunch of drills, you've already got a stone furnace and burner mining drill to start out, so stick your drill on the edge of an iron deposit, blue gray rocks on the ground, make sure to have it face the furnace, following the yellow arrow. This is vital so that the mine ore automatically gets placed into the furnace. Note that you'll be working with this sort of directional interaction a lot throughout the game, so get used to how it works. The basic drill and furnace run on coal, so they'll run out after a while and you need to cut down trees or mine it directly to fuel them. Just mine it, then feed the coal to your devices via left click. You'll get better non coal reliant devices eventually, but I'll cover that later. In the meantime, here's a quick reminder for you guys. If you're liking the video so far, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. And you get to be updated on the latest videos like this and many others too. Just click that button. It's as easy as pie. It's as easy as pie. It's as easy as pie. Easy as pie.
It's pie. Yeah, pie. Looks like you've mined a bunch of ore, but one drill and furnace isn't gonna cut it for the whole game, for sure. Time to expand, with the main priority being crafting more drills. First, move your cursor over the drill in the crafting menu. You'll notice two lists of materials. One is drill components, the other consists of raw resources necessary. For now, you can ignore that first list, since the game allows you to directly craft a drill without making the components first. It's still useful to know what components are needed, though, as for future items, you may have some spare parts lying around to cobble together, or components shared between items that you can craft in advance. You'll also need to craft specific components later in the game. Anyway, once you click to begin crafting, you can check on the item status at the bottom left of the screen where your crafting queue is. If you have enough materials, you can also queue up multiple crafting orders which will get executed one after the other. Remember the drills consume coal, so in addition to having enough drills for copper and iron, you'll want to dedicate some to offsetting the coal cost. Build a few mining drills and furnaces, then we can move on to the next step. The ideal amount of machinery at this point would be roughly four iron furnaces, a few for copper, some producing stone and a lot of coal production. Still, don't worry too much about having a perfect ratio of machinery. Even if you build too many or too little, it's not like the game is over. You'll just be delayed a little bit. It's not like there are many real life consequences unless you get stuck playing for hours trying to fix your mistake or something. All right, now that you've got those set up, it's time to build some conveyor belts. No, that's not the intended use of conveyor belts, no. Conveyor belts are really, really important in Factorio, and since the larger a factory gets, the more stuff you need to move around. When paired with inserters, which feed materials to and from the machines, you'll be able to easily transport materials around to where they need to be, but remember, check their direction. You don't want to end up taking out the wrong materials and wasting time tracking a misplaced inserter down. Basic burner inserters are fine to build for the early game and can in fact be useful for keeping boilers fueled even when electricity is unavailable, like during blackouts and brownouts. But like low-grade drills and furnaces, they require coal to run, so aren't very efficient in the long term, be sure to upgrade as soon as you can. In this game, electricity is how you power pretty much everything that's more complex than a drill or conveyor belt. Once you've established that loop in the previous section, you should start trying to generate electricity. To do this, you'll need a steam generator, which is made by linking an offshore pump boiler and two steam engines. Each steam engine costs around 30 plus iron plates and five stone, so get to mining. Note that the offshore pump, which goes in the water, doesn't need any electricity to run. Once it's running, and just connect the boiler to it, either via pipes or directly. Remember the direction order, I mentioned in the previous section, now's the time to make sure it's correct. Connect all the pumps, generators, and steam engines to each other in the right order on your generator won't work. It just won't. If you're lost, just hold down the alt key for a detailed view of all the connections and where they should go. You'll also need power poles to transport the electricity generated to your machines. Obviously, electricity doesn't have legs to walk. Stick a few poles down and make sure their blue covered square overlaps each steam engine in at least one square. If the connection fits, the machine you're trying to power will have a blue outline. Once you've connected the poles in a steam generator, you may notice it shows a yellow flashing icon. Don't worry, it's not gonna explode or anything like that. Probably... <laughs> But it's in all seriousness, the icon just means it's producing electricity but has nothing to feed it to. Generally, you'll want to have two steam engines per boiler, so most people just make a line of boilers with each connected to two engines. Also, there's a reminder, don't forget to make proper supply lines feeding coal to the boilers. A pump produces enough water for 20 boilers, so the most often used setup contains one offshore pump, 20 boilers, and 40 steam engines. Of course, that's the optimal setup, but feel free to play around with the layout and get creative. Nobody's gonna grade you on this, so have fun. Next, let's move on to the automation of the item production. We'll start off by boosting resource production. Now that we have electricity, it's time to start using electric mining drills, which are twice as fast compared to burners and don't consume fuel. I also recommend you craft the long-handed inserter, able to reach twice as far as normal inserter. Placing conveyor belts right next to machines isn't always possible, so a long-handed inserter is a worthy investment. Aside from that, you need to begin the process of research and science to start craft one or two science labs. They're cheap to build, but take quite a while, so better get on it now. Once they're done, remember to connect them to power lines and start crafting 10 science pack number ones. What are science packs for? Well, they're necessary for building the assembly machine, which allow you to craft individual components, not just finished items. It's what you'll need to start automating science since upcoming science packs and machinery to improve your automation tend to require individual components. <laughs> Woo! Building a factory is pretty tiring. Let's take a quick break. Since we got some free time, how about giving me your feedback in the comments down below? I'd love to hear from you guys about what you think can be improved. If you got any more beginner tips, feel free to drop them too. I'm sure people will really appreciate it. Or ask any questions or just chat. Don't be shy. 
You done? Let's get back to the video. This bit is a major milestone where you'll move beyond a beginner into actually playing the game. I won't be going too in depth on the science aspect since it's a beginner's guide and the science plays a bigger role in the early, mid, mid, and late game, but here are some things to consider. What you've been doing so far is working up towards the automation science pack. The process is sort of an extended tutorial which teaches you simple production chains like iron plates, iron gears, wheels, and copper plates, science pack one red. It's really simple and you'll only need one conveyor belt to accomplish this, okay? Moving further into the game, you'll need to start trying to craft logistic green science packs. It involves a more complex production chain requiring lots of belts and inserters, which produces two end products. Combine those products and you get science pack twos. Beyond this point, you'll no longer be able to make science packs by hand and need to automate the process. Oil starts to become important as it's refined to produce plastic for red chips as well as sulfur, both vital ingredients and chemical science packs. We also have production science packs, which introduce you to rails, electric furnaces, and modules requiring a lot of reach. Next, utility science packs, which combine aspects of production and chemical packs requiring you to build utilities and lots of blue chips. The final science pack, which is Factoria's endgame goal, is a space science pack, all right? After so long, it's finally ready. I can finally leave this planet. This pack is going to take everything you can muster, from resources to equipment to production, just to prepare a rocket for launch, which then gives you a certain amount of science packs as a reward. Launching a rocket is the game's win condition after all. As promised, way back in the intro, I'm going to talk a bit about enemies. If you've enabled creative mode or reduced the enemy spawn rate to zero, like I recommended, they won't be an issue for you, but if you haven't... <laughs> Right, so enemies are the planet's native insect life forms, which get pissed at you for ruining nature with your pollution and start attacking you. Come to think of it, maybe we're the bad guys, but hey, capitalism is fun, who cares about pesky stuff like morals or ethics? Anyway, your enemies come in four different variants. Spiders, which are melee units that can charge. Spitters, which spit acid that can linger as a puddle, really gross. Worms, immobile enemies that act as turrets. And nests, which spawn biters and spitters, not fun things. All enemies aside from nests can also also spawn in different sizes, ranging from small to behemoth, which their size and stats increase as the game goes on, so keep that in mind. You can acquire various weapons, from tanks to turrets to even nukes, to fend these guys off. Of course, you'll have to build these weapons, they don't come for free. If you're planning on facing these enemies, you gotta know their behavior too. When left alone, nests will spawn biters and spitters freely, they generally docile though, unless you approach them or provoke them with pollution from your factory. When a pollution cloud reaches a nest, the insects will turn aggressive. Every 1-10 to 10 minutes at random, they will launch an attack if not all the herd is arrived, it'll wait for up to two additional minutes for stragglers. Once all of them are gathered, they move to their attack their target over the shortest path possible, accounting for terrain, but not for player-placed obstacles like walls which the insects will attack to try and clear. You can exploit this by creating mazes with walls and directing them in a specific direction, funneling enemies into turret kill boxes. Keep in mind that if an enemy comes into proximity of a military unit or structure, it will switch targeting priority to those instead. In Factorio, avoiding enemies isn't enough, they'll also expand their base periodically like you do. Every four to six minutes, a group of 5 to 20 biter spitters will leave their base to create a new base which consists of as many worms and nests as there are members in the group. This new base will always be 3 to 7 chunks away from the existing bases. The higher the enemy's evolution level, which determines the enemy's size as I mentioned, the shorter the interval for new bases to form, and evolution level also affects base size. Upon selecting a valid spot, biters and spitters in the group will die and turn into worms or nests. Not all insects will die at once, with a delay between each individual getting converted, so forming a base isn't instantaneous and it can be interrupted. Basically what I'm saying is if you get it the chance, unleash your flamethrowers on them. It it's, it does things, okay? That's about it for my beginner's guide to Factorio. I hope it's been informative and do feel free to add your own tips or suggestions in the comments down below. Above all, don't be afraid to experiment and fail with various tools in Factorio. It's just a game after all. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit like it and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again soon.